Good morning. Good morning. And somebody suggested that the next time I'm here, if you invite me back, we could just meet out in the uh, narthex in the <laughs> lobby with our coffee, and then I wouldn't have to disturb everybody to get up and come inside. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Might be a little crowded. I don't know how we're going to get the piano out for the choir, but we'll, we'll figure that all out. A uh, couple announcements. Um, Obviously, Pastor Kira is not here, which is why we can joke around like this. She is at her godson's first communion. And <clears throat> not being able to be uh, back here for my brother's kids' first communions because they always had them on Holy Week, Monday, Thursday. And so I missed all of that. Um, I am happy that she is able to be there for her godson on this very special occasion. <clears throat> the altar flowers today are in memory of Chuck Bracken's brother, Ken, whose funeral was up in the city yesterday. Uh, and also, in addition to those who are listed on our prayer list, uh, Bill and Sherry Ekstrom's granddaughter, Mackenzie, went into early labor yesterday. She had a baby girl whose name is Sophia, uh, weighed only two pounds, 14 ounces. Uh, little Sophia is doing good. Uh, Mackenzie did need uh, blood transfusions and everything, and so we ask you to keep both mom and daughter uh, in your prayers this coming week. Are there any other announcements that we need to make this morning? None, none, none. Highway cleanup is Saturday, April 20th. Oh. Our voice from the, ro the ditches in Cannon Falls. <laughs> uh, highway cleanup, uh, so that's about three weeks from now, right? Two weeks. Is there a sign-up sheet? Yep. Okay, sign-up sheet for cleanup, and it is a lot of fun carrying out your bag and putting garbage in it. Other announcements? <laughs> Okay, now I'm, I'm trying to make sure I get this all correct because I get this goofed up every time. We are gonna ring the bell today. So, <laughs> Jeff is ready to ring the bell and we will use this time to refocus, prepare for our worship.
Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us share God's peace with one another. Or bump. That's peace. A reputation that has been written. It's peace. And so quiet and shy. I have to sit over this way. And stay standing as we join in our opening hymn.
come to the mountain. We come to meet Jesus. Jesus sends us out to serve. We will be his witnesses to all the world. We confess our sins before God and one another. Risen God, we confess to you, to ourselves, and to one another, that we have caused harm. Take away our sins, that we may fully and violate your commandment, to love you with all your hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and to love our neighbors. In grace and mercy, God forgives all our sins and with joy and expectation calls us into new life for the sake of the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us together into your presence and charge us with the task of bearing your love into a suffering world. Strengthen us for this work that all may share equally in your will and trust your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May be seated. Do we have any young people with us today? Ah. Okay, I've got my spotlight on you. Is it doing any good? It's on, it's on, it's on, see, it's on, it's on. Can you see them highlighted? Not at all? How about now? Anything? A little bit? Now let me ask you guys, if it was pitch black, we were in a dark cave, would this flashlight work then? then we'd be able to see? Would it be helpful? Uh-huh, yeah. Sometimes when we get, to, I'm gonna have to sit on a step two, I can't get down too low. And you guys will help me up, right? You're not gonna leave me sit here? No, <laughs> and you're laughing at me now? Okay. You know, the flashlight does work, even when it doesn't look like it's working. You know, because I could, whoa. Yeah, I can shine it like this and we really can't, doesn't do much, does it? Because we can see them. But it's when it's dark and we need it that it's good to have it. Today we're kind of, like you're not going to hear it unless you stick around and listen, but we're going to hear the story of, of Jesus' ascension, going up to heaven after the resurrection. And he says, we're going to send you guys out, looked at his followers and said, I promise you that when the Spirit comes, you will be my witnesses to all the world. Not just a little bit, but to all the world. And that's the job he's giving all of us too. Jesus said, you're going to be my witnesses to all the world. Do you even know what a witness is? What is it? To watch something? If you had to be a witness in court, what would you do? Tell them what happened, right? So Jesus said, I want you guys to be the ones to go out and tell other people what happened, how much God is doing for you. And so that's what we're called to do. And sometimes it's kind of like a flashlight in a light place where it doesn't look like we're doing any good. Other times it's like we're in a dark room and our little witness, our telling people what God's like might make all the difference in the world. And the other thing is, notice this flashlight has this other way to go to, right? You can go that way. So it doesn't matter exactly how we go out and tell other people about God. That's not the important part. The important part is if somebody's lost, we can go there and give them a hand and 
help them find their way out of a dark cave or a dark spot. Or if they're sad, we can go there and be there and help them by just being with them. Jesus said, we are all witnesses to God's love. And that means that whatever we do, wherever we go, however we act, we're showing people about our God. Which means, do you think we should go out and slug people? That's not about our God. Does our God do that? No. Do you think if somebody's crying, we should laugh at them? Do you think if somebody's hurt, we should walk by? No. What we do, what we say and what we do, shows other people about our God. And so whatever we do, what should we show? Kindness, happiness. Do we get to forgive people? Yeah. All those great things. So, should we have a prayer? You guys want to pray? You want to say the prayer? Let's say, thank you, God, for being with us, for calling us, and for sending us out to be your people today to help others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I think, do you get, do you guys, do you want these three? You want to go? Okay, but first you got to get me up, right? Yeah, okay. Just a minute. All right, all right, all right. Oh, oh. Thank you, thank you. Oh, don't fall over, then we'll have to help you. The first reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, Theolophilus, O lover of God, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his sufferings, he presented himself alive to them by making many convincing proofs, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is it the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, I'm, I feel like if I push down on this, I'm going to go somewhere. This is not a good sign because I do grab things and lift. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Normally on this, the second Sunday of Easter, what reading would we have? from the Gospel of John. It's basically every year except in the narrative series. Second Sunday, well, that means not most of us don't come to church on the second Sunday either. We usually get Doubting Thomas. It's the famous Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter story. So it was with great pleasure that I realized in the narrative lectionary, which we're following here at St. Asgar's, we don't have to deal with Thomas and his coming back when nobody or when the others had seen Jesus. Instead, we are getting that beauty, beautiful tradition of that transition from the Gospel of Luke to the Book of Acts. And if we haven't gone back lately and read the resurrections accounts in the Gospel of Luke, it is it is wonderful to do that because there is a parallel between his opening here in Acts and that last chapter in the Gospel of Luke. The women in Luke are the ones who go out to the tomb on Easter morning they, to anoint the dead body. 
they find the tomb empty. And it's two men in white saying to them, do not fear. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Today in the, in, in the reading from Acts, we have the disciples looking up into heaven and two men again appear saying, why are you looking up? You know, it's time to get on with it. In Luke's gospel after the women, we have the story on the road to Emmaus where Jesus walks with the two disciples and they finally figure out who he is when they break bread together that evening. They run back to Jerusalem tell others. In the last scene in Luke's gospel, the resurrection stories, is Jesus appears to the disciples and now it's almost as if we were back with doubting Thomas. He appears in the room with them. They're a little bit unnerved. They're afraid again. And he said, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Peace be with you. And he offers them to touch his hands, feet, and side. And they celebrate. And so we reach this day in the transition from Jesus' life with us on earth, the resurrection, his appearances, which helped those early followers to understand that God has done the impossible. God has raised Jesus from the dead. And that living Lord now walks with us, talks with us, eats with us, and says, touch me. Disciples, followers, the women, all get to experience this. And then the great promise, because it would have been nice if Jesus could have just stayed you know, this is not a guest who after three days starts stinking. This is somebody we would want to have around. Jesus said, no. You know, this is the way it's going to be. I'm going to go back to heaven. You wait. Till those first followers. You wait, and God will do what God has promised. And so they wait. Knowing, as Jesus has said, God will give you what is promised. God will clothe you with power from on high. You will be my disciples. That's not a threat. Although I think for many people today, that whole idea of we are witnesses, we're the ones that have got to go out, it's like, oh, really, I think somebody else's turn today. I'm going to sit back. This is not something that Lutherans are real enthusiastic about on a regular basis, but it's something that we need to take seriously because this is what our calling is, and it's a gift. And it's something that God says we're perfectly capable, able to do. Why? Because we have been soaked in the Holy Spirit, and we know the story. We know the story of what God has done for us, what God is doing for us. Think of what God is doing for us. We've heard the great news of the resurrection. We know Jesus' ministry, how he went out and reached out to everyone, not just some, but to everyone, welcomed them in, healed, restored, forgave, loved, celebrated, ate with them. What what do we know? What do, what's, okay, if, and this, and I, yeah, we, we're clumped together enough, I think we can do this. I'm going to get with some people, you know, two or three in a group or four or whatever, and share one thing of value that you know that God is doing in our world today. Doesn't have something profound but share one thing of value that you know God is doing in our world today. So you might have to actually get up and move a little bit, and that's okay. You know, we, we, we can move. So get together, take a few minutes, and share. I expect to hear lots of chattering. Move around, exercise time. It's kind of like recess. 
and there will not be a quiz. I think we had a lot of good things to share. A lot of wonderful news of what God is doing in our world. Which means you all did this without even thinking, right? A little, a little awkward maybe at first, but then I heard nothing but chatter, chatter, chatter. Now some of you might have deviated and talked about other things, but it it doesn't matter. God has given us his gift of being able to share the good news that Christ shared with us, that is shared throughout the biblical witness. God wants us to just go out to be ourselves, to be God's witnesses, because it is through you and I and the whole church, all of God's people, that God's word of life and grace and love and forgiveness goes out to all people. You are God's witnesses. Don't stare up. Don't look around in amazement. Don't wait for the two guys in white robes to come in saying, hey, what are you doing there, guys? Snap to. Go out. Be yourself. Share the good news. And now I'll ask the question, do we stand or sit for the hymn? Stand? Okay, then let's stand up and sing.
Let us turn our hearts and our minds to our Lord in prayer. For justice and peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Miami, Iraq, Haiti, Russia and Ukraine, South Sudan. Lord, in your mercy. For relief and recovery efforts following the earthquake in Taiwan and for those injured, those grieving the loss of family members and friends, Lord, in your mercy. For all aid groups who risk their own safety as they deliver food and supplies, especially World Central Kitchen as they grieve the killing of seven workers in Gaza, Lord, in your mercy. For high school and college seniors as they discern where God will lead them after graduation, Lord, in your mercy. For all people in recovery from alcohol abuse in this Alcohol Awareness Month, Lord, in your mercy. For our praise, to rise at the wonders of creation, especially for the solar eclipse this week. Lord, in your mercy. For all in need of your healing strength. Eva Marie, Linda, Paralee, Bruce, Samuel, Chuck, Brian, Wayne, Darlene, Carter, the Hayward's daughter-in-law, Janine, Bill and Sherry, Ekstrom's granddaughter, Mackenzie, newborn baby girl, Sophia. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Let us join in confessing our faith in the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe. In God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. giving us his sins, the resurrection, the judgment, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is ready. 
you may be seated. And I think community assistance come up. And then for those who are with us online, the body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. given for you. Body of Christ 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 given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. 
body of Christ given for you. Hmm? <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, the source of every good thing, we offer now our gifts and our tithes for the sake of bearing witness to your transformative work in the world. Accept these gifts as signs of our commitment to the work you have entrusted Amen. Friends, why are you looking up? But what did Jesus tell you to do? So why are you still looking up? Yet your call is not to stand staring up to heaven, but to start looking to those around you. He is not gone, but he is all around us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Christ. As witnesses, we follow the cross as it heads out into the world. Turn to the cross. No, you're not turning. Everybody turns. Yeah, it's the cross. The cro come here, come here. <laughs> there you go. You got everybody looking at the cross? All right. Go in peace. Love the Lord by serving the stranger. Thanks be to God. Good job. <laughs>